buy the house through a mortgage. Yes, it is. That's right. In fact, sister, you know, um, this issue of interest, um, it is one of the major crimes in Islam. Um, it is the only crime that Almighty God has announced war against. So it means that the people that, that take interest and give interest and write the contracts for interest, they have themselves made a proclamation of war against God. Now, if you're innocent and you don't know this, you're not responsible because you didn't know. But let me give you the, the principle behind it. Interest was created by, was a conspiracy that was created by a group of people that allowed a small group of people to wind up owning the properties of people for nothing. And after that, to not only own their properties, but to wind up owning and controlling the lives of even their children and their grandchildren for nothing. It's a conspiracy. And this conspiracy goes so far that through interest, different countries wind up in a situation what they call international debt. You've heard of foreign debt. So that countries are given money and they can't pay that money back. And so what happens, the people the, or the banks who have already been paid that money, another group of people go in there and take over the natural resources of that country, rule that country, run that country for hundreds of years on the basis of what? A debt that started out and built up interest. For instance, imagine a country borrowing 10 million and there being a 22% compounded interest on that every year. So you don't have to be a genius to, find, to understand that in a, in a matter of 20 years, that 10 million winds up to be 230 million and it's still not paid. What do they do? They go and they start a civil war to make sure that people that are in place to begin paying that debt. And so imagine this not in one place, but all over the world, third world countries, undeveloped countries who enter these situations of debt and they wind up remaining in poverty and remaining under disease and other things through what banks, conspiracies that introduce this issue of interest. Now to bring it home to you and I, what does it mean? I buy a house. I'm a simple person, a hard working person. Me and my wife are both working very hard. We buy a house <coughs> for 70,000. Or let's say here in Australia, let's put it a different way. Let's say it's 150,000. So we buy a home for 150,000. And we're very sincere. And uh, there's a 19% interest attached to that, which means that over a period of a 30-year uh, mortgage, a 20-year mortgage, I wind up paying for that house if I, if I live, if I continue my job, if I'm employed over a period of 20 to 30 years, for a $150,000 house, I wind up paying at least $280,000 for that same house. The, the worst thing about it, I must pay off the interest before I pay the principal. See what happens? So it means that for the first 15 years, I'm paying off what? Principal. I mean interest. And suppose I lose my job. I lose my job. My wife loses her job. I get sick. She gets sick. What happens? They come and take the house from me. Is right? Even though I paid off 150000 160000 they take the house from me. So that 160000 was for nothing, isn't it right? Then what do they do with the house? They sell it. For, they they resell the house for more than what it was worth Something and give somebody else another mortgage for the house at maybe 220000 And it just keeps on going. So this shows you that this crime is worse than slaughter. It's worse because it kills the spirit of people, their investments, their generations. And so the people who are engaged in that conspiracy they have entered a war against God because it amounts to injustice and oppression. So for us Muslims, God made it clear to us. We don't write the contracts, we don't enter the contracts, and when we know about it, we try to find a way to get out of it. Now, you're innocent. You didn't know. Now, I would think that your husband, being a Muslim, he should have understood this. But maybe because he wasn't mindful or practicing, I mean, Allah knows best, so sometimes we're in a situation where we say, well, we ain't got no choice. We have to do that. No, we don't have to do that. I could live in a house that I'm renting and be just as comfortable, although I don't own anything, but at least I'm not at war with God. So my suggestion, sister, is that you go to a Muslim financial person 
who can help you and your husband to back out of this situation with the least amount of complications, but make the commitment to do so. And then after that, sis, buy what you can afford. Live in a house that you rent and be satisfied with that because everybody to nowadays is, cannot afford to just buy a piece of property. And nowadays, buying a piece of property or renting a piece of property doesn't necessarily give you any more security. I, thinking about your children, it's okay. What you do is, what you do, sis, is that first think about your relationship with God before you think about the security of your children. Because even in thinking about the children, this is how we get trapped. Even with this insurance thing, somebody comes and knocks on your door and asks you, do you have insurance? Or th don't they? And you say no. They say, well, listen, all you got to do is pay $23, $23 a month. I mean, it's, it's nothing. And in case you die, your children are going to get $50,000. So because you're thinking about your children, what do you do? You wind up saying yes. So you pay $23 a month. How much is that a year? About $600, $600 a year, isn't it? And what do you get for it? If you don't die, you don't get nothing for it. So in 10 years, how much is that? That's 6,000, isn't it? Now think about 100,000 people that are paying the same premium for 10 years times six. How much is that? See? You see the, the kind of money. 60 million that these insurance companies are making, these big, big buildings, probably the biggest buildings in Sydney, and they never lose. Why? Because they're stealing. They're robbing. They're the biggest pirates. So in Islam, Allah warned us about it. And so most Muslims avoid interest at all costs. Now, there are certain parts of the way we live in life that sometimes it's almost unavoidable because they got so many traps that one of the little traps is going to get you. Like, you know, you got the credit card and you are intending to pay, but you missed that payment. So they get you on that. You know, or you go to the hospital and there's a little bill there you didn't pay to get you on that or the student loan to get you on that. So they got so much stuff hooked up, but the direct things avoid it. That's the best thing I can tell you, sis. That's not interest. If, if I, if you give me 10,000 to invest in my business for you, and I say to you that I'm gonna share the profits with you, then also you should know that I'm also sharing the liabilities with you. If I lose money, what happens? You're gonna lose some too, right? If I make money, you're going to make some. This is called mudaraba. This is called business. Trick on the subject, GST. Is that rebuttal? What is GST? GST. Government, Government, services. Government services. Tax. That's another issue. That's, that's another issue. Look, what I want to say is that whatever you're forced to do is a different issue. But business is business, and interest is something else. Now, people try to make interest seem like it's business, but it's not business. It's robbing, it's stealing, it's, exploit it's exploitation at the highest, most sophisticated level. And it used to be against the law in all religions. It used to be against the law in Australia. It used to be against the law in, in Great Britain. It used to be against the law in America until the financial wizards, companies, bankers overpowered the governments and now all of a sudden it's a big business. So all I can say is just avoid it and that's a, another subject.